Hey y'all, I'm JD and welcome back to the Dimensions Woodworks Woodshop. Today, we're going to be building a swing. So this is where the process begins. In the lumber yard, we got some pretty eastern red cedar. Now, this is a vital part of every single project I do. I typically go to the lumber yard with my cut list in hand. I know the length and width of all the boards I'll need, and I begin to sift through the pile to see which pieces best fit my needs. Remember your lumber yard etiquette, make sure to put the stack back as you found it and then make your selection and now it's time to take it to the house, unload it and get to work in the shop. Because a few parts in this build called for three inch and two inch thick material, I had to do some laminations because my lumber yard only had four quarter material available. So I just get them cleaned up, put a liberal amount of glue on it then I kind of stumbled on a little trick in this build by using the sheetrock mud knife, then sprinkle down a little bit of salt to keep it from slipping and sliding too much while in the clamps and get to gluing the boards together. I could have run the faces of these boards over the joiner, but I didn't want to lose too much thickness in the material, so I just glued them up as they were. And because I don't have a thousand clamps, I went ahead and drilled some holes in, drove a few screws home, and let those act as my clamps while the glue cured. After letting the glue cure overnight, I removed all the screws, then took my laminations to the joiner to get a true face to reference off the table saw fence, trimmed that slight edge off the outside so I had two square edges, then I made the cut right down the middle for these two four inch wide boards that I needed out of the eight inch lamination. Then I took the pieces that were at their final width, skip plane them, and ran the faces over the joiner again to get four square true edges. I took them to the miter saw and cut them to their final length and began the layout for the main frame to assemble the swing arbor. I just held everything together temporarily with screws, then later in the process removed these screws and replaced them with carriage bolts. Then just to keep the frame from looking so blocky and square, I took these little miters off of the long stretchers on the front of the arbor pieces. I again tacked everything in place with some screws temporarily so that I could keep moving forward with the design. Now for the middle stretcher that will hold the weight of the swing, I wanted to inset it into its mating piece with a mortise and tenon to have a really good strong connection. You could make this cut a few ways. It would be much quicker with a dado stack, but it was just a few tenons, so I decided to leave the regular saw blade in the table saw and just get them cut. I began to clean up my tenons with the router plane and my chisel. Then I've always found that it's much easier to round over the tenon than it is to square the mortise. So I rounded the tenons over really quickly with just a few strokes of the chisel and finished it off with a little sandpaper. Mm -hmm. 
and a spiral upcut bit and my router made quick work of these two mortises. Now back over at the miter saw, I began to work on these 45 degree braces that go at the top and the bottom, and those really help to prevent racking or swaying in the swing. Then I began to attach these octagonal frames. They're there for a little design element, but they really help to tie the two posts together on each side. Then I began to cut down several pieces of this thinner stock. You can see my bundle here. And these pieces will become the pergola style top, as well as the lattice work that go on either side of the swing assembly. In keeping with our 45 degree theme, I decided to add a 45 degree chamfer to the face of all of these top pieces to add a nice little design element. Then I started putting together the pieces that will form the lattice work on either side. I cut myself a spacer block to make this process go a bit faster. Then I just move those blocks down, tack in the next piece, and move forward from there. I'm using wood glue along with CA glue to get a strong bond, but that will bond quickly to allow me to keep working. Then I just attach the lattice frames with screws that I will counter bore and plug later. Now that the construction of the arbor frame is complete, it's time to turn our attentions to the swing itself. And because I have several repeating pieces, I want to go ahead and make templates for these pieces so that each of them are identical and they all line up perfectly in the end product. If you want to make any minor changes to the design, the template is the place to do it. Once you're happy with your template and have it dialed in, we can move along to the real pieces. I use my angle finder to give the back of the seat of the swing a slight slope. Once I'm sure I'm happy with that angle, I move forward in using the templates to create the actual pieces for the frame of the swing. I just use a few pieces of double-sided tape to stick the template to the actual stock that we'll be using. Rough cut it out on the bandsaw, then get the final shape dialed in with the flush trim bit on the router table. After getting the bottom and the back pieces for the frame of the swing, I move on to the armrest and armrest support using the same method as I did earlier. Back over at the table saw, I begin to cut out the slats for the seat on the swing. I again go to my angle finder to establish that angle, then use the bottoms of those boards as a pivot point, drive in one screw where I'm happy, then replace that screw with one bolt, make sure I'm lined up, then drive in the second bolt that will hold these pieces securely together. After drilling a couple of pocket holes, I secure the armrest support to the seat bottom and the armrest itself to the armrest support and the seat back. I'm trying to make sure that I stay level with my screw line so that I get a good grab with those screws when coming from the back side into the frame of the swing. After we have those frame pieces for the swing assembled and we're happy with the way everything looks and lines up, it's time to lay out the holes that the chain will pass through as well as the cup holder in the armrest.
Now it's time to attach the seat slats to the swing itself. I used the same method as I did earlier with the wood glue and a little bit of super glue, then just pop a couple brads in each slat, making sure to keep even spacing between each one. Now it's time to finish off our cup holders and our armrest. And if you're like me, you can't buy cedar dowels to match your swing. So I had to make some dowels on my own. Using this great tip I got from Tamar at 3x3 Custom, I used a round over bit, half the radius of what I wanted my final dowel diameter to be. Then just ran the round over on all four sides. I cut those ends off and I chuck it up in my drill to give it a nice final sanding and we end up with pretty uniform dowels. I removed the armrest assembly from the swing and begin to lay out where I'm going to place the bottom of my cup holder. I want something there at the bottom to support the bottom of a can or cup when it's placed in the cup holder, but I also wanted it to be pretty small and not obtrusive. So this is the method I came up with. So to attach the parts for the bottom of the cup holder, I just used a little bit of CA glue and some accelerator because these pieces won't be getting beat up and it just allowed it to bond quickly and to keep moving in the project. Now to lay out the location for the eye bolts that the swing will hang from, I use a plumb bob to mark straight down from the hole we drilled earlier in the armrest. I use a fender washer on the outside of the eye bolt to help disperse the load across the face of the wood so that we don't get any cracking down the road. Then we're going to utilize that waste piece from cutting out our cup holder so that both eye bolts are on the same plane. It's exactly the thickness as the bottom frame of the swing. Another fender washer and we will attach it to the seat back of the swing. We want a lot of rigidity in these four contact points because they will be carrying the load of the swing and whomever is sitting in it. After connecting the chain to the swing with the S hooks, I do a little test fitting just to see what the proper length of the chain should be. Cutting the chain was something I was really nervous about, but a Dremel tool and one of these small cutoff wheels made quick work of it. Then I connect these specialty swing hanger bolts. This is going into that middle stretcher that we joined with the mortise and tenon on either end. Then it's time to hang the swing and do the final adjustments to the chain. After I'm happy with the swing height and the way it hangs, I count out the lengths of the chain and make marks to cut off the excess. Then it was time to prep everything for finish. I took all the major pieces apart, sanded everything to get it ready to spray.
When working with projects that will primarily be outside, this marine grade spar varnish helps to add a lot of life to the build. After the finish has had time to cure, it's time to reassemble all the parts and get the swing back together. Thanks so much for watching y'all and for sticking around until the end. I really do appreciate it. If you'd like to build the swing yourself, there'll be detailed plans for sale on my website. If you want to support the channel and not have to spend a dime, all you have to do is like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. And that really goes a long way to supporting what we do. I had a lot of fun building this one and hopefully the owners of the swing will have some of those memorable moments like you saw with my daughter in the video. And until next time, don't forget to get better every day.